All right, so you clicked on this video because you want to know how to land a machine learning engineer role in 2024 or 2025. And I'm going to tell you how to do that because I just landed a machine learning engineer role at a top tech company and I did not have to do a PhD or some of the advice out there um, that is currently on the internet. And I had to do so much research to figure out how to get on a team like this or what direction I should take just because of all the advice out there. So I'm hoping that this can help someone um, kind of understand what goes through the mind of a hiring manager that is trying to hire for these types of roles and more importantly, who I've seen get hired in these roles and how I basically went about it. So I think to first understand what you need to land an ML engineer role, you first need to understand what an ML engineer is. What does that even mean in this industry? An ML engineer or a machine learning engineer is someone that has a software engineering background or skill set, but also has some sort of specialty or experience in ML products or ML research, right? So there's a lot of domains an ML engineer or this software engineer that's working on an ML team would have options for such as they could be working on a computer vision project you could be an ml engineer on a gen ai project you could be working on more traditional ml on the statistics side and just on recommendations in general um there's so many types of ml engineers and it really comes down to when you're applying for these roles finding out hey which section of ml am i applying for or which type of team at a company would i like to work for right and that will kind of give you a better idea on how to actually land these roles. And that's why at a lot of these companies, you'll see the listing as software engineer, comma, ML, AI, or like ML at Meta. That's very common. Uh, machine learning engineer or software engineer, machine learning. Same thing, okay? Research engineer is also basically the same thing as a machine learning engineer, except you're more on the research side and probably working with research scientists who usually have PhDs and are actually implementing papers, doing really heavy math and kind of experimenting and coming up with those ideas because they've been doing a PhD in that section of ML for a while. So research engineers or ML engineers might work with research scientists who have those PhDs um, uh, depending on what that team at that company is working on. Now that you know what an ML engineer is, how it's a newer term, and how there's a large range of topics, how do you actually land an ML engineer role? And the main way you land an ML engineer role that I basically discovered or have consolidated with all my expert redditing and also landing the role and seeing friends land the roles as well, is you need one of two types of experiences or projects on your resume to get that interview okay you need either an industry project meaning hey you are already working a software job and you get an ml project right that could be you're in to that section if i got a gen ai project at a job i'm already working at as a software engineer or data engineer that's going to let me get the skill set relevant to gen ai as an ml engineer and i can start after a couple years or a year applying to gen ai ml engineer roles right but here's the thing, what if you're a master's student or you're just doing a general software engineering job? You don't know what to study or do and that's kind of the position I was in, right? I could just do some scikit-learn projects, do those random tutorials that everyone is giving information about on the internet, but random tutorials are not gonna get you the job. Random ML courses, even intro courses, right? There's a very famous one by Andrew and that course is very good to get an intro to ML to learn maybe what it's about but if you actually want to land an ML engineering role at a company, doing like some sort of convolutional neural network on a breast cancer data set and being like, oh, here's my accuracy. And then, yeah, maybe like I tied it in with this model and putting on your resume with PyTorch, that's not going to cut it. Okay. What you really need and that I've really noticed is relevant. And I've even talked to I guess engineering managers in the ML space at different fan companies as well. But what you need is one of two things. I already said the industry project. The second thing, if you're in that pickle that I described, is you can do an academic project at a university or try to do some sort of academic project on your own. That's the last option, but really doing an academic project in general. And what do I mean by that? If you want, let's say, a job 
in ML compilers, or I won't say ML compilers, but let's say computer vision, if you download or look at the latest vision transformers papers at these conferences, um, such as CVPR and et cetera, or just reach out to your local university and ask them, hey, these are some cool papers you guys are working on in the computer vision space. Can I contribute? Can I be a research assistant? Can I help? Or, hey, I'm doing this project. Can I get some credits for it as part of my master's? Or anything related to that. The more, the more, I guess, of an academic approach you take with it, that's one way to do it. Now, you might be like, wait, you just said you don't have to do a PhD or a master's. You don't. You can do this through a master's. If you do a master's, such as at Georgia Tech Online, there's a project option, not a thesis, a project option, where you can just do any project, choose a specific, a specific ML project you wanna do, get a professor to sign off on it, and all of a sudden, now you have that ML project that's gonna be on your resume and relevant to that hiring manager for that specific ML engineer team you're applying to. And I think what I'm trying to get at is you really want to Think about this more from the perspective of a hiring manager. If you're a hiring manager and you are hiring for an ML compiler engineer, right? A very specific type of ML engineer. You know what they might consider valuable is someone that's actually implementing or working with this stuff. Any hiring manager wants to hire someone that's doing something very similar to what their team is already doing. That's why an industry project's really good or an academic project directly relating to it is really good, to the project their team is working on. And so imagine if you wanted this ML compiler engineer role, so you go and contribute to online ML open source compilers such as Triton, or you make projects utilizing these formats. I know there's one, I think it's called MLIR, that's another famous one, that a lot of these ML compiler engineer roles list. and you can just go and start playing with these open source tools and do a personal project, maybe look up a paper in that space and try to basically learn about it. And if you can have that project on your resume that's demonstrating you're learning something that's directly related to the team, that can get you a very strong foot in the door because there's very few engineers who have very specific types of expertise in these ML topics, right? If I was a hiring manager at Meta, um, hiring for an XR or an AR type role, which by the way, I'm not an engineering manager, so you can take it with a grain of salt. But my strategy for trying to make them interview me would be, hey, let me do a VR project that's um, related to like computer vision, do something with vision transformers, maybe take one of the latest papers that got pushed out and wait, let me just tinker with this model, make a modification. I don't have to go and publish a paper. If you publish a paper, whether working with a local university or not, that's cool too. That's going to be even more important. But you just need something that's directly mapping from your resume to the project. And that's really all you need is either you can do it through the industry project or you can do it through the academic project. Now, my last thing is going to be that if you don't know what type, if you don't know what type of ML engineer role you want, you're kind of just out there to explore and you enjoy the whole field in general. That's great too, but I would still encourage you to be putting projects, whether through your job, you can do this in the form of being like, hey, I don't have an ML project right now, but is there a hackathon? Can I do a proof of concept for like this vision transformer or this ML concept I find interesting? Can I just showcase it at a hackathon for two days in the company? Or is there some ML club at my company that just talks about papers and we make some random proof of concept? You can put that stuff on your resume because you're technically doing those projects or that exploration at that company. And that can be another way to kind of get industry experience even if you're not working directly on an industry project. You can work with people in your company that are, talk to them, schedule coffee chats, etc. And so when it comes to the academic side, right, if you want to do a master's and then as part of your master's do a thesis or a project on a specific type because you know what specific type of ML you're interested in, then you can do that. And you could probably drink a mango lussie for every single time I said ML in this video and get diabetes. And I know this video also isn't like the most easy to understand, but I'm gonna be putting out more content on how to land an ML engineer role. And 
Honestly, actually, I kind of lied. I might not put out more content on how to land an ML engineer role, but I will be putting out more content in general. And I just felt like posting a video today. So yeah, I hope this helped someone. And if you have any questions at all about how to land like an ML engineer role at a top tech company, or hey, this is what I'm doing. What should I be doing for X, Y, and Z? Then please leave a comment and I'll actually respond even if only like in a span of two years, 10 people see this video, but they're very niche and they want that response. I'll, I'll like, I'll just straight up respond. Um, and then also one more thing, by the way, is you can luck into these roles. If you're a generalist SWE, it's kind of stupid to think there isn't luck involved. Now, what luck means to you, that's debatable. But what I say lucky is I don't mean completely out of your control. What I mean is that some companies at certain times will be opening up more ML roles and will have more positions from more teams opening. And because of that, when you have these projects, when you have your preparation, when your preparation meets opportunity, you can be lucky. And I think doing the most you possibly can up until that point is very important. And sometimes you might be really lucky where you only did one project or you just started your master's and maybe that just got you through the door and you were interview ready and you remember you need to still have that software engineering skill set. Whether that means leak coding or system design or actually having experience, that depends on the role. But yeah. And also here's some really good ML engineering channels I see right here, A, B, and C. I'll link them in the comments below because they have really good advice that I actually thought was practical, useful, and yeah, some of them even don't have a lot of subscribers, but the advice they're giving is gold and their background is gold. Um, so yeah, I hope this helped. Do projects directly related to the roles you're interested in, even if it's just to learn. It might help you roll a cross ML role, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And yeah, I'll see you guys at the next video. See you, bye-bye.